Okay, so welcome to my channel, KSS the Aviator. Um, I am KSS, and in today's video, I'll be talking about the actual cost to become a pilot or to get your private pilot's license. So, for one, let's start off with what we need. Um, in the FAR aims, a part 141 pilot, there are two parts, 141 and part 61. 61 is more... Um, unstructured and part 141 is more structured and you need approval by the FAA to be in this part. So I go to the University of Nebraska. My degree is in professional flight aviation. I'm not completed yet, working towards my uh, all my certs. Um, you need a private license, commercial license, multi-instrument, CFI, and instrument along with your restricted ATP which you get at the end of the course. So that aside, um, what you need from the FAR AIMS. So the FAR AIMS says for your private license part 141 which I am, you need 35 hours whereas part 61 you need 40 hours. Since it's more structured they give you a little bit more leeway in part 141 so that's what I'll be explaining for you guys. So you need 35 hours. 20 of those hours must be instruction from a CFI. Three hours must be cross-country time. Three hours must be instrument instruction. Three hours of night training, including one cross-country of more than 100 nautical miles and 10 takeoffs and full stop landings. Then you also need five hours of solo time, one solo cross country, three landings, at least 100 nautical miles um, with one straight line segment, I believe, of at least 50 nautical miles, three takeoffs and landings in pattern at a airport with a control tower. I'm sorry, that was my phone. So with that information... This is an invoice from the airport that I go to, Advanced Air Incorporated in Council Bluffs. This is a old one, but regardless, it'll serve its purpose. So, the three items are rental, which is the aircraft. I rent a Cessna 172 because I tried the 150s. I'm pretty tall, six foot over six foot. A 150 is way too small and too cramped for me. I you, you could rent a cheaper aircraft, a 170, I mean a 150 is about $100, however for an extra 30 bucks, I uh, am more comfortable. Um, so you have a the rental fee, then you have the dual fee, which is dual for your dual instruction from your instructor, and then you have ground possibly. So on this I did 1.8 hours of ground. and. I don't usually do a lot of ground. Um, and my instructor is very nice. He doesn't charge me for most of the ground that we do. However, this does state that I have ground on it. So 2.5 hours of rental and dual, and the rate for my aircraft is $130. There is $37 um, per hour for the dual instruction and then the 26 uh dollars an hour for your your ground altogether this cost me basically five hundred dollars just for this one session of, of flying almost three hours so obviously with uh some quick math you'd have with what i what i told you before um you'd have your aircraft rental fee we all know that you need 35 hours of flight time so regardless of whether your instructor is there or not you'd have that 130 multiplied by 35 that's four thousand five hundred and fifty dollars okay that doesn't include your ground time and that doesn't include your dual time and with part 141, you must have ground time. It's it's not an if, and, or, or buts about it. You must have ground time. So if you include the uh, instruction and 
I'm, I'm not going to do all these calculations, but if you do the instruction and uh, ground all together, you're looking at around eight to, I, I'd say six to ten thousand dollars, because that thirty-five is the minimum that you need for um, the FAA to let you take a check ride. That is the minimum. The national average, regardless of Part Six One or Part One Four One, is roughly. 55 hours so more or less you're going to be around the 55 range so regardless it's going to be six to around ten thousand dollars um it's 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 pretty difficult to just have ten thousand dollars to throw together however it's great to know that you can start your training and stop which i don't recommend i recommend flying three times a week like i do or taking out some sort of, of loan or go one for one and take out a college loan. If you're late later on in your life, um, hopefully you have a retirement fund or something put, put aside. But flying isn't for somebody who just wants to do it to do it. You have to enjoy it because there is a lot of work that goes into it. And I, for one, am dealing with that now. Like There are times where I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this stall or oh my gosh, like, I'm scared of spins, like, there's so many things that can happen and that go through your mind that can, you know, make you not want to do this anymore, but if you want to fly, nothing, I, I mean, nothing will stop you, just like any other thing that you want to do. Well, this is KSS The Aviator, and this is my video on what it actually costs to become a pilot, to receive your private pilot's license.